what is going on guys it is may 12th 2023 and the pulse chain launch is imminent it started with richard hart obviously saying it was coming in the next seven days and it was reported yesterday by kdp that the mainnet rpcs went live 24 hours ago and uh and richard said he's going to sleep i don't know if that's indicative of anything and now pulse chain is trending worldwide also reported by kdp with 221,000 tweets so it is really getting talked about a lot if you look at yesterday's episode of crypto banter you had two of the biggest influencers in the space uh Ivan on tech and Ran Nooner got on stream and we're talking about Pulse Chain date released, Hex 14,000X. Also, Mason Crypto, many other influencers are watching it very closely and reporting on it. So there are a lot of new people coming in the space and there's a lot to unpack when it comes to Pulse Chain. People don't know what it is at all and are just beginning to get started like what is it and then some people know a little bit about it and they want to know why it's such an opportunity then furthermore how do i buy pulse chain can i buy it yet when do i buy it it's a very multifaceted subject and there's a bit of a learning curve so in anticipation of this imminent event one of the biggest events happening in crypto i figured it was appropriate for me to release one of my courses to the public because this course covers everything about Pulse Chain and Pulse X. No matter what level you are, by the time you're finished with this, um, you should be pretty up to speed on what's going on. So enjoy the course, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, share it all over social media. And if you find it meaningful, consider becoming a patron where you can attend all these courses live, which are given regularly. You can get access to the entire archive of recorded courses and meetings. You can also join my weekly Zoom meeting live uh, where I answer questions, discuss topics, and many other good perks. So check out the Patreon in the description. If you want to take a more hands-on approach, you can book a one-on-one -on -one with me. Link is also in the description. With no further ado, enjoy the Pulse Chain and Pulse X course. All right. Welcome, every welcome class <laughs> to the to the Pulse Chain course, the Patreon Pulse Chain course, in anticipation in celebration of the launch of Testnet V3, and in anticipation for the imminent mainnet launch. Huru uh, had insider trading when he made the course because he knew it was going to launch on Wednesday night. So he's like, "Yeah, let's do the course on Friday morning." Give it a little time to soak up. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got I got my bags filled. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I bought I bought uh, I didn't buy this week, but I bought at eight nine cents. So I'm buying tops like the rest of you guys sometimes. But uh, yeah, so there's gonna be no uh, update on the portfolio because no trades were made. But um, so yeah, so let's just get into it. We hear Pulse Chain a lot these days. So what exactly is Pulse Chain? So let's just take a step back and uh, go back to uh, Hex. We did the Hex course a week ago or two weeks ago. If you guys didn't see it yet, you should definitely check it out. But um, basically, it started where you had this blockchain called Ethereum. And obviously, there were a lot of uh, functions on Ethereum. There were a lot of projects on Ethereum, like uh, DeFi, right? And stable coins, USDC. And then you had Compound and Maker. And then you had NFTs and decentralized exchanges and all these kinds of things. And then there was a, uh, another project, which was called Hex, right? So Richard Hart created a certificate of deposit-like uh, function on the blockchain, with a cryptocurrency and he called it Hex and it did very, very well. Uh, Hex was built on Ethereum. So the Hex token, right, was an ERC-20. An ERC-20, 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 it's just a token on Ethereum. Right, so, uh, on Ethereum, you have these smart contracts. Maybe I should use, switch my camera. This is blurry. I'm going to switch the camera. How many cameras you got? 
I got this new one because it's 4K. Oh, oh now, now it focused. But is it going to unfocus? Hopefully not. No, it keeps. All right, we'll try one more time. So a token on Ethereum is an ERC-20. So you have the smart contract on Ethereum, right? Like uh, DeFi. For example, Hex, right? It's a smart contract that uh, pro is programmed to be a certificate of deposit. And for the coin of the ecosystem, you had Hex, right? Which was the ERC-20. It was the token on Ethereum. So uh, Hex was working all fine and dandy, right? Everybody was... Um, locking up their hex coins in the contract. They were making commitments for one year, two years, 10 years, 15 years, up to 15 years. They were locking it up. They saw their uh, T shares being minted. They saw their rewards being uh, tallied up every single day at 8 p.m. Eastern time or 7 p.m. depending on, uh, on uh, daylight savings, whatever. And it was all working very well. And, Whenever they had to make a make a stake or end a stake, they paid a couple cents, maybe a couple dollars in Ethereum uh, for the gas fee, right? You have to pay the miners for running the the, the blockchain and uh, executing your smart contract. You give them a little fee. It's like tipping the waiter or the waitress. And uh, everyone was really happy. Things were running well. Vitalik even said, you know, we need to keep the gas fees low. It's reasonable. Vitalik is the founder of Ethereum the lead developer, whatever you want to call it. He said, yeah, it's important for the to be in the best interest of the blockchain that everyone can use it. Uh, we should make it that the gas fees are low. He even said a five cent gas fee is too much. So things were going well. But then as the price of Ethereum and Bitcoin and all the cryptos started going up in 2019, 2020, it was 2020 really, when the bull market started, more people started using the chain. More people started using Ethereum. And uh, since each block, right, has a limit of uh, how many people could use it, if you want to use the block, right, so so uh, in each block, right, on the blockchain, if you guys don't understand this, you got to watch the earlier curse courses as well. But basically on each block in the blockchain, you have uh, – things that happen in a given period of time, right? So at the current block per se on ETH, um, you got people uh, people, people uh, using, uh, let's say Aave, they wanna borrow money, they're using uh, Uniswap, right? Todd's providing liquidity, right? So when he, uh, when he uh, deposits his pair into the pool, um, that gets written on the block, right? Uh, uh, David wants to borrow some money so he could buy more hex. He's using Ave. That gets written on the block. Uh, and then uh, you got, uh, you got, for example, Metastain wants to stake some hex, right? Metastain wants to stake some hex. That's written on the block. But the block is limited, right? Only a certain amount of you know functions can be done on a given block. And if, and basically, in order to secure your spot on the block, in order to secure your spot so you could use the function. Uh, if too many people want to use it, you have to pay higher than anybody else. Okay, and uh, and as uh, so 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 that means that if you didn't, weren't willing to pay higher, you'd have to wait till there were less people on it. So as Ethereum kept on uh, getting bigger and bigger, it got very big very fast. Too many people were using it, which means everyone's outbidding each other. The fees went way up, way up, right? So what used to be uh, so now it's not just uh, Todd and David and, uh, and Metastang and uh, Jeff and Bob using it. It's everybody using it. Everybody's using Ethereum, right? Everybody wants to buy ETH. Yo, I heard about this cryptocurrency. So they're all using the functions. The blocks got clogged. And obviously, in order to, in order to get your transaction done, you had to pay a lot of money. And I'm talking like it was like 10 cents, 20 cents. It got to the point where if you wanted to make a trade on Uniswap, you're paying three hundred dollars. So it's pretty much unusable for uh, people with small money. Uh, Todd, do you remember that? Todd was around. Yes. What was the most he paid? <laughs> Come on, I'm tracking this wallet that's dumping. What What were you oh, talking about? How much is the most you paid uh, for using Ethereum? Oh. 
when I was trying to get Sheba, because that's all I knew, I, I, some of my trades were over $300. Over $300, exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. It was nuts. There were a lot of projects that were built on it that just shut down because nobody could use it. So that's the point. Too many people were using the block. The price of using it went up. And Hex was not the exception. Uh, Hex, it used to be like under a dollar to make your stake and to unlock your stake. And then it started becoming in the tens and twenties of dollars. And then Vitalik uh, made Vitalik and the decentralized community of Ethereum. They made a uh, they made a change to the uh, the code, where basically the function for unlocking the stake, which is called the S load function, I don't. I'm not such a technical person, but basically that was the function that counted, you know, how many days you've been staked, whatever. He made it more costly in gas fees. So people locked up their hex to stake it. And when it came time for their unlock, there were times where it cost more to unlock the stake, especially if they didn't get in early and like they didn't experience the price appreciation. The cost of unlocking the stake cost more than the stake itself, right? So they, they locked up 500 bucks. Maybe they got some interest. It went up a little, went up to like, uh, let's say they locked up $200. I don't know. If, okay. They locked it up for like five months. They got some interest appreciation. It was worth $700. They had to unlock their stake and they were paying $800. So it was just like, just let it bleed out at this point. That's the point. It became very unusable, especially for the people that uh, didn't get in early and didn't weren't unlocking these like fifty, sixty thousand dollars stakes, hundred thousand million dollars stakes. You know, if you're willing to do that, then you could pay five thousand bucks, you know, to unlock it. But uh, so it became pretty much unusable, uh, like everything on Ethereum. So uh, the founder of Hex, Richard Hart, basically said, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna start our own blockchain, right? And we're gonna make the fees lower. One because there's gonna be less activity. And uh, two, because it's going to be faster and we're obviously going to make the functions work to our advantage, right? Instead of ramping up the, the, the S load costs, we're going to you know keep it down. We're basically going to make it to the best of our ability that uh, the functions on Hex are not going to be costly. Okay, so that is what he decided to do. He decided to name his blockchain Pulse Chain. He named it the Pulse Chain chain all right and that is where pulse chain came about he's like we're gonna take hex on to the pulse chain and uh that was the beginning of an era uh a beginning of an era the birth of a new blockchain that has significant uh probably the most engaging pound for pound uh, community in crypto uh, which you guys see right now. So that is where Pulse Chain came about. Now, how did he make Pulse Chain? So uh, in order to really understand that, we have to just understand a little bit more about blockchain. Okay. Um, right. So you have a blockchain like Ethereum, for example. And then you have blockchains like Polygon or um Binance Smart Chain or uh, Arbitrum now. Um, there's there's Avalanche. There are a lot of blockchains out there. But how did they come about? How were they created? Uh, they vary in different ways. Some are faster, slower, you know, cheaper, more expensive. But how did they come about? They are called forks. They are forks of the Ethereum net work okay those blockchains there are some blockchains like cardano which are completely started from scratch and there are some that are what are known as forks now what is a fork well uh in order to really understand that we have to understand what a fork looks like you got which you guys i'm sure don't <laughs> uh stupid joke okay so a fork is basically this right you have one stick coming down and then it separates into multiple you know we're just going to do two i know the ones on your dinner table are three pronged but the point is there's one and then all of a sudden it breaks into two okay right that is called a fork okay so the same way that uh that 
works with the fork. The, the reason why they call it that is because when you make a fork, uh, the same applies to uh, blockchain. So for example, um, the first major fork was actually Ethereum Classic to Ethereum. Uh, basically, what you had was you had Ethereum. You had Ethereum created by Vitalik, Buterin. There were other co-creators, though, that you guys may or may not have heard of. Charles Hoskinson is an example. He was involved. Joseph Lubin. Who else was there? There was um, there were a lot of, a lot of people that are behind uh, Gavin Wood, who's in behind Polkadot. Lubin's behind Kusama. They all made their own kind of thing now. But uh, why did they break up? And obviously, Hoskinson made Cardano. So why did they break up? Because you had the blockchain called Ethereum out there. Ethereum had a smart contract known as a DAO. It's a decentralized autonomous organization. So the function of it was everyone put their money in there and they voted on which uh, projects, which coins uh, it, should, it should invest in. And then they all got like their share of the investments. It's kind of like a like a hedge fund just on the blockchain investing in different cryptocurrencies. So some clever person came around and found a loophole in the code and was able to extract like tens of millions of dollars uh, from the DAO. Just like take it away from everybody. Like he and he did it legally. Like he did it according to the code. Uh, he was able to do it. So there was an argument, uh, basically, should we create a new blockchain or is code law? It's like, hey, we wrote it like this or, and, you know, that it is what it is. You know, he operated according to the code. Uh, so there was an argument and there was a breakaway. So basically there was a fork. So they forked Ethereum to a new uh, blockchain called what we know today as Ethereum. And the old Ethereum became known as Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is the original Ethereum. So that was the first fork. So basically the way a fork works is you have the same way you have the fork, right? So you have a blockchain, right? Each blockchain, right? A single thing, okay? And then at a certain point, when they decide to fork, it goes from one blockchain to two blockchains, right? Okay, okay, okay. And then they continue about their way. So now you have one blockchain, now you have two blockchains, right? Okay. Okay. That's the fork. So in the case of Ethereum, in Ethereum Classic, you had Ethereum Classic. And then one day Vitalik's like, uh, this is stupid. People could find loopholes in the code. We got to make a new one. So he forked and then there was Ethereum. Ethereum was actually the new blockchain. So this is ETC <clears throat> and this is E. Okay. Okay. So what we know today is Ethereum is actually a fork of Ethereum Classic. And then they went their separate ways. Okay. And they're still going on till today. All right. Now, uh, what's interesting is, so obviously the code is open source. So it's created is they take the uh, code from the original blockchain and they just bring it over to their new blockchain and they make some changes, some changes uh, if they want. They don't have to, but anyone could do this. Okay, so now we have Ethereum. So let's uh, continue the, is that clear? Does anyone have any questions? Okay. So let's continue with Ethereum. So we're gonna get rid of a, okay, so now, Let's forget about Ethereum Classic. We are now on the new chain called Ethereum. Ethereum. Okay. So things are going really well for Ethereum. They forked. You know, their blocks are coming out every uh, 12 seconds, whatever. Okay. Uh, and, you know, everyone's building on it. You know, we got... What are the, what are the projects on Ethereum? Axie Infinity. We have Maker. We have... Synthetics Network, we have Compound, we even have Hacks, okay? Sorry, my handwriting sucks. Uh, point is, everyone's building on it. It's getting more and more expensive. Oh, no. It's not you must have tapped your camera. I think it's just because it moved. Or because you got up and got in front of oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're trying right, to right. focus on something. 
Focus. Focus. You could do it. We'll move it a little bit. That's what that's how you fixed it last time. Just grab the camera. Oh, oh, oh ge go. genius. I guess it senses the okay. Yeah. Uh okay, so things are getting expensive. Hex is on Ethereum and uh it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. This is the plan, okay? What's going to happen is Richard Hart is like, okay, smartly, what's going on? Hey, good morning. So Richard Hart, smartly, and for good reason, decided, why would I create a new blockchain from scratch, right? Everybody's familiar with MetaMask. Everyone's familiar with the Ethereum network. They know how to use it. They're, you know... The forks, by the way, they use the same wallet. So it's just let's not mess with let's not mess with success. Like Charles Hoskinson created his own blockchain from scratch, and he's having a lot of trouble getting people on it. Let's just leave it at that. It's like I'm gonna fork it, right? So I'm gonna fork it. Uh, and at that at that point, you're gonna have Ethereum, and also, right, at a certain block, at a given block, this is the, whatever the origin block. Origin block okay which hasn't happened yet there's gonna be a new game in town called pulse chain okay okay uh so the same way ethereum classic went to ethereum and ethereum classic ethereum is gonna go to ethereum and pulse chain and then what happens from then on is they go about their business, okay? But since Pulse Chain, there were some modifications. It's a little bit faster, right? 10 second. It was supposed to be four second or three second, but came 10 second block, block, blocks. Um, that, that was when it was on BSC. Correct, yeah. Because it was, yeah, I think it was, it was, gonna it do was that, that you know why, Todd? Because I think it was delegated proof of stake, which is faster because there's only 33, yeah. uh, validators yeah but he he found so many bugs and he was alerting bsc to it and they couldn't fix them all so he said we can't work this it's not perfect yeah so. yeah bsc is a it's, it's a garbage chain but that doesn't matter it still went up like crazy right so yeah <laughs> cz pumped your bags uh point is is um so yeah so it's going to be a, there are going to be some variations so it's going to be instead of uh 13 it's gonna be 10 seconds um but and obviously probably, you know, uh, changes in the functionality that are advantageous as far as keeping gas fees low. Uh, we could get into the tokenomics of PLS versus ETH. That's a whole different story, but we're going to keep it simple. Uh, the point is, is that uh, he's creating a blockchain. And not only that, the fact that there's going to be less activity, right, because it's newer and everyone's already on ETH, that'll itself make it a lot cheaper because there's less people bidding to get on the block. OK, so. Point is, is that what is unique about Pulse Chain? Why is it very special? Anybody? No one, no one asked. I, I, th I think it's unique because it was built by Hexagons for Hexagons to uh, yes. keep the cost down, and you're basically going to. I mean, eventually it's going to get slower and more expensive, but we got seven years or so to have fun. So, yeah. And we'll be rich. So who cares? No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's true though. Hopefully uh, no expectations of profit from the work of others. Uh, okay. So that's true. Yes. One is normally with a fork. Um, the, the code is forked, but all the projects, all these stuff, those don't, those don't get copied over. Okay. And that includes hex. So there's not much activity going on. Do you know anybody that uses Cardano? No, nobody uses it. In fact, it's crap. The code is garbage. Uh, a lot of people just try building on it and they're like, screw it, this sucks. Um, same thing applies for Avalanche. Same thing applies for, well, actually Binance is used. It's known as the rug factory. It's like full of scams. There's no like legit projects on it. Um, and they've had some, operational problems solana same thing uh so well Solana's not a fork it's its own thing but the point is is that <laughs> after they fork they have very they have a lot of trouble onboarding 
because everybody's already on Ethereum. It's like if I create this was the example. Uh, of the answer you're looking for is system state copy, huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, you you alluded to it, but yeah. but the point is, is like if you what was I gonna say? If you look at uh, if you look at Microsoft, right? Uh, I could okay. I I, I have a new uh, Mike. I have a new Microsoft. You know, it does the same function, but it's a different interface. It's a much better interface. It's a lot. It's very advantageous. The spreadsheets are so much better. It's like, but are you? Is anyone going to use it? Or everyone's just familiar with Microsoft, right? Everyone knows Microsoft. They know exactly how to use it. it like I use Adobe Premiere, right, for uh, editing. It's very complicated an editing uh, system, right, for editing videos. It's very complicated and complex, and it took me some time to learn. And it's like you could come out with a way better system, but I already know Adobe, so unlikely that you're going to get me onboarded unless it's like free and like way better, and I have a lot of time on my hands. The point is, is that they're already Ethereum is so well established that nobody wants to use the other blockchains, even if they're advantageous in some way or another. Uh, and that's what happened. So uh, Richard Hart, first of all, understood that. So he's like, not only am I going to copy the blockchain code, right? Not only am I going to copy, you know, the, 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 the code, I'm going to copy the system state of the blockchain, right? So I'm going to copy all the projects, all the projects, all the tokens that are on it, that are built on Ethereum are also going to be brought over. So all the smart contracts that are on Ethereum, all the tokens that are on Ethereum are going to Pulse Chain. Axie, going to Pulse Chain. Maker, going to Pulse Chain. Synthetics, going to Pulse Chain. Compound, going to Pulse Chain. Hex, going to Pulse Chain. They're all going to Pulse Chain. That is why he calls it the world's largest free airdrop. So one, the smart contract is going there. All you need to do is create a website that interacts with it and you can use all these things right faster cheaper to all the erc 20s all the tokens on ethereum are also going there so why does that matter right like the hex video now why does that matter it matters because all these people that are in the communities that are speculating on these tokens especially hex obviously which is one of the biggest ones shib that's a huge community going to Pulse Chain. They're all going to have all this free money, right? And once they have all this free money, why not use it? Why not, you know, buy some PLS and uh, use the blockchain, okay? So, like, all that has to happen, and we can actually do it right now, with the new Testnet V3, is you just change your network and all your coins, which have value, we don't know how much value, probably a lot less, are going to be there, right? So it is going to incentivize mass onboarding and adoption of the blockchain. So even if, let's say, only Hex was copied over, that would be enough because that is a huge community with a lot of activity. But the fact that they're getting Hex and all these other big engaging communities shows that much more so how significant you know this blockchain is. It's not going to be what's known as a ghost chain right it's not just going to have um a, a token that nobody uses that there are no communities on that there's no stickiness uh to there's going to be a lot of projects especially ones that uh people left because it was too expensive a lot of them are going to have this new second chance this new life on pulse chain there are also new projects that are being built exclusively to Pulse chain, uh, because you know a lot of people know about it. There are a lot of maybe hexagons that want to build. So Pulse chain is a very, very unique uh, blockchain in the sense that it's not only you know improved cheaper Ethereum because there are a lot of cheap blockchains. Polygon's cheap, Arbitrum's cheap, Optimism's cheap. They're all cheap. But uh, the the idea is is that not only is it cheap, but it also has user adoption and i think in the long run although like you know first bull market maybe even two bull markets you know you're going to get some speculative uh run-ups just because everything's running up uh in the long run you need people using it uh that's that's important so uh i think uh that's what's really unique to it uh are there any questions 
Yes. Do we know if any of those communities are already interacting with the testnet? Um, I'm sure they are. Uh, for example, like if you're in SHIB, right? You just, let's, I mean, are, are there any communities that are interacting on like a major scale, like on Ethereum? Uh, not so much yet because one, there's no value on the testnet, right? There's no bridge. There's no connection, you know, between the US dollars, coins, USDC in this case, and the ERC-20, like they're not paired in pools. So it's not redeemable for any money. So it's not significant yet. Um, also, Ethereum, now that we're in a bear market and crypto interest is down, Ethereum is uh, not so expensive to use. So there's less uh, incentive. It's still expensive, you know, comparison to what it was in the beginning, but there's less incentive to really use it. But there are, I'm sure, individuals and there are some, but not not like major communities yet that have, you know, been using it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So actually, let me... Uh, you guys want me to demonstrate the uh, testnet v3 because uh, I was actually doing that yesterday just to uh, show you guys an example sure uh, yeah of, uh, make a make a farm stake some huh. PLS PLSX I'm not gonna go that deep or maybe we will but like for example so this is my uh let me just let me uh uh first let me get Twitter man that's gonna be the biggest playground ever dude. I know. Looking so that, at all those pairs, it's just like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun. Uh, not logged in on this browser. Okay, let's go to Richard Hart. Sorry, I'm gonna pull up the screen in a second. Okay. Um. Okay, so here we are. One second. I'm sorry, guys. I'll I'll be I'll be. I'm just getting the the tweet up. Okay. So basically, at what is known as a test net, right? A test net is it's basically not a fork. It's just like this kind of. It hasn't forked yet. It's just like a a snapshot of the network. It's like a new like fake blockchain it's like i don't know exactly the technicalities but it's just there's no money on it so let me let me let me share my screen for y'all uh where are we okay present share screen uh window uh share all right, you guys could all see. Yeah, let me let me make sure that. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so basically, what we have here is um, Richard Hart announced the launch of Testnet v3. Right, use it to prepare for mainnet launch. Warning: This is the final Testnet, and mainnet may launch at any time now. Okay, so this is this is uh, it's actually interesting, right? It happened right before uh, the mainnet launch. But basically, he gave a link. Uh, and I, you guys should all be in the Discord. I linked it in the Discord, but these are the, the, uh, the links you want to use because there could be some, you know, malicious uh, attackers that want to get your, get you to sign on uh, legitimate protocols that steal your money, whatever. So basically, what you have is the the quickest way to do it is you go to the Block Explorer. Okay, this is the Block Explorer. You go to add testnet v3 okay and now right now if you look at my wallet i'm on oh i'm actually on a testnet v3 uh, but i was on ethereum mainnet okay so it's on ethereum mainnet and these are my coins hey if anyone wants to give a donation <laughs> links in the uh this is my donation wallet link is in the uh is in the description of my videos just saying <laughs> no i'm kidding uh i appreciate you guys being patrons but uh, so so basically, it's on Ethereum mainnet. You click add testnet v3. Hey guys, don't we donate every month? That's true. That's so you guys don't have to. You guys all get a pass. You add testnet v3, but you see there are other. These are other forks, right? Binance Smart Chain. This is testnet v, v2v, whatever. You add the testnet v3, and uh, you look in your wallet, and all the coins should be copied over. I'm not 
sure why hex is not copied it could be because what's it called could be because the hex entered the wallet before the date of the snapshot but let's see uh if you go to um tokens uh all okay so you go to hex here we go so you click hex you click contract you copy the token contract okay okay import tokens you paste this command v okay now also so it says this address matches a known ethereum mainnet right it's the same addresses because it is a fork a system state fork so so what you have to do is you have to also add the uh, token symbol which you guys could see here uh token where's the token symbol h-e-x oh or, oh i'm saying h-e-x that's, so, that's a ticker and then you might need a decimal i'm dumb okay and decimal it's it should say here no where's, where's you might decimal? have to open it up a little bit where's the decimal is this the wrong is this the wrong site for it try ju just try on your metamask put put in next or whatever it might just grab it you might not need the decimal no you need the decimal todd you do yeah you do all right let's see one second let's go back to hearts twitter uh block explorer rbc url tokens Oh, let's see a different one like Tether. Do they have the, yeah, see Tether has the decimals. Why doesn't Hex have it? So your decimal is zero. Here's a zero. Well, Just put zero. Oh, it's zero? That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, okay, we go to Hex. Oh, see, now it has decimal. Oh, eight. There you go. Eight, there we go. Okay, so we copy, copy, add token. Token contract address, command V. Token symbol. H E S. Token decimals. Eight. Add custom token. It has a balance of zero. It means I got the hex before the snapshot was taken. Import tokens. Um, but yeah. There should be maybe the USDC has the balance or else. Whatever. Yeah, or your ETH. Do your ETH that you have in that wallet. No, there's no ETH. You can't. It's we're on Pulse Chain. Yeah, I know, but you have it in your your wallet on that wallet, right? Yeah, but that's not getting copied over. Oh, yeah, it, it is. It will be, but it will be a much less. No, no, it's getting copied over as PLS. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's getting. Not. You're yeah, getting your ETH copied over. No, no, Todd. If your ETH is not in the RC20, it's the native token. The native token. So if you have one Ethereum in your, uh, oh yeah, your, yeah, yeah. In your I'm sorry. You're getting, yeah, no. Bad. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Copy. Try one more. If not, uh, it's because Snapshot is from before this. This is a relatively new wallet. US. See six. Yeah, there you go. See that? Perfect. 170 coins, right? So the USDC, which is an ERC20, uh, is getting copied over onto the uh pulse chain, right? So that is what it means by the state of the system. It means so wherever wherever the uh, coins are at the fork, um, the coins will be copied over in Pulse Chain. So if in my Furu Finance wallet, I have 170 USDC, 170 USDC are going to be in my Pulse Chain wallet as well. Now, how much are they going to be worth? Is Obviously, USDC has a value of $1 because it is always tradable for a dollar. You could go to Circle and give them your token and they will give you an actual dollar like it'll be wired into your bank account uh so it's not gonna be pegged because obviously uh they're in circles not doubling their treasury 
in order to give out free money to all the Pulse Chain people. So there's going to be no peg, but it will have value. And its value is based on the ratios on the decentralized exchanges. Uh, so that's um, that's really uh, that. So it's going to... So USDC, as well as every ERC-20, including HEX, right, which is going to be copied over and known as a PRC-20, right? It's going to have some value depending on the pool. Um, let me see. Where's the, the K4K tweeted the faucet? Let's see if we can get some test PLS. K4K. Okay. K4K. Okay. Uh... There we go. So this is the faucet. It's where you get the free gas token. It's free, but it's worth nothing. So we connect the, oh shoot. Okay, next we connect the Furu Finance wallet. Connecting. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get my 10 PLS. Did it give me? Scroll down. How come I didn't get any? Well, it takes a second. Can you scroll down? What? Scroll down on that page. It's not letting me. Oh, okay. This is it. Oh, I got 10. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I got my... my... And you want like two second block times, huh? (laughs) You got me there. All right, so let's let's try and buy some hex, right? So let's go to... um... Let's go to the Pulse X Testnet V3, which again I refer you to Richard Hart's uh, Twitter. So Pulse X, right? So this is also the Testnet. So this these these are smart contracts that interact with the Testnet, right? And then once Mainnet launches, you'll get uh, Mainnet. Uh, and then if you guys use those, copy those links and bookmark them. That way, you never accidentally click on the wrong link because hackers and scammers try to change one little thing lowercase to uppercase or a period and then they take your money so if you guys are going to play around just copy those links and bookmark them great great point by todd uh definitely great point and thank you oh wait so so what i gotta do is i gotta connect a wallet metamask uh the furu finance one next uh connect okay all right so I'm on Testnet. I'm interacting with Pulse X. Guys, quickly, uh, if you haven't know, if you don't know yet, Pulse X is the decentralized exchange uh, on Pulse Chain, right? So what Uniswap is to Ethereum, Pulse X is to Pulse Chain. So once you have your free tokens, you want to sell it for money, you're going to go to Pulse X. Uh, but okay, so. If you look here, it says um, I want I, I I don't have PLS. I want to exchange my USDC, but it's not there. So what do I do? You go to manage tokens, uh, and you have to enter the address. One second. Okay, you have to enter the address. And how do you do that? You go to the Block Explorer, which is right here. You go to Block Explorer, um, tokens, again, all. Uh, I want. Uh, USDC, right? So, is the Block Explorer the same thing as a, a Ether Scan on uh, Ethereum? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right on, right on. Uh, okay, so I copy the the contract. I go back to Pulse X. Uh, paste it. Oh wait, whoops, maybe, maybe this. Oh, there we go. Boom. See, USDC is there. Uh, anyone could create, this is just a warning because like someone could create a fake USDC. So you have to make sure that it's the legit one. Anyone can create a PRC 20 on pulse chain with any name, including creating fake versions of existing tokens and tokens that claim to represent projects that do not have a token. If you purchase an arbitrary token, you may be unable to sell it back. Okay. I understand import. Boom. Okay. So now I got my USDC. And I want Pulse X, for example, okay? First two days, no bridge. I don't bridge in my dollars. I 
So then let's see the price. Let's see the ratio. People were talking about ratios in the Discord. Are you not in the Discord? Get your ass in the Discord, everyone. But let's say I want uh, 40 USDC. That'll get me 34,969.5 PLSX. So how, how about we do that? So we just do enable. Oh, shoot. Do I need to connect my hardware wallet? I might have to. Okay, I need to. Let's connect the hardware. What do? You... Let's connect the hardware wallet, everyone. Yeah, I'm sure if any of you guys did a one-on-one, you've uh, been through this with me. Uh, so where's my Furu Finance hardware wallet? Yeah. Okay, this is my. Ledger wallet. If any of you guys aren't signing on a hardware wallet, I urge you to buy a hardware wallet uh, and store your keys on that. And obviously, you guys could book a one on one and we could help like help you get that set up. Or I could book a one on one for uh, anything you guys want. Oh, shoot. I used all the USB things. So I'm going to have to take out the light, the lighting. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm going dark mode. All right. We can still see. Okay. So I plug my hardware wallet in, uh, enter the pin. That's the next class we should do the hardware wallet. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Ethereum. Oh, okay. And you're on Ethereum, by the way. You don't have to download a separate app, okay? So blind signing must be enabled. Okay. Okay. So I go to settings, enable blind signing back. Okay. Application is ready. So now I got my hardware wallet connected. Okay. Okay. Enable USDC. Boom. Confirm. Sign my hardware wallet. Review transaction, blind signing, blah, 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 Accept and send. Okay. Why do you have to connect the hardware wallet if you have the those coins on your extend extension? Anytime anytime you spend or swap, you have to use your wallet to sign the transaction. Yeah, well, Peter, that means that I know you're not using a hardware wallet, so go buy one. And <laughs> no, I, I have a hard wallet. If I need, I use it. But you, you connect it through MetaMask. MetaMask is if you're using MetaMask with your uh, seed phrase on MetaMask, it's online and could get uh, and could get hacked. If you use it, if you if you go on your MetaMask and you know you enter a dummy wallet and then you connect a hardware wallet. One second. Uh, one second. Uh, you go here, you go to connect hardware wallet. Then that means that basically you're accessing your funds uh, through a hardware wallet. So every time you use MetaMask, you need to press the buttons on your hardware wallet. And uh, you're accessing if any the same funds, what you have it right now on extension through the uh, hardware wallet? Yes. If I ever want to send money on MetaMask, if my hardware wallet's not plugged in and doesn't sign, it won't send. Yeah, your, 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 your MetaMask is like your your um your hot or your uh, i just had a brain fart but um everything should run through your hardware yeah. so because my, my my dummy uh, dummy um meta mask has zero coins well okay we'll talk about this after okay we're getting too distracted the point is my hardware wallet's connected uh i press swap okay swap i understand Waiting for confirmation, scroll down, confirm, sign on the hardware wallet, Peter. Okay. Review transaction, blind signing, amount Ethereum address, blah, 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 blah. Accept, accept and send. You guys see that? I hope so. Accept and send. Click we we can't we can't see yours because you're not sharing your whole oh oh. I thought you guys okay, my cat. Okay. Point is that's it. Uh, close, and now we go to my MetaMask wallet. Uh, it's pending. Let's just wait a second. We expand view. And it was confirmed. So now I go back to my assets, 
Oh, I didn't add Pulse X, dummy. Okay, so that's okay. That's okay. I just need to go to import tokens. Uh, go to PLSX. Copy the contract. Uh, eighteen decimal. All right. Uh, okay. So, token contract address. Boom. Oh, it's already there. Add custom token. There we go. I got my 35,147.16884 uh, PLSX. How cool is that, guys? Is that cool? That's what you guys should be doing on Testnet V3. Uh, you should be getting acclimated with it because if you make a mistake, you don't lose money because all this is monopoly money. It's not going to be bridged with uh, real dollars. Once Pulse Chain goes live, if you do something stupid, it's on you. Now it's on nobody. But uh, that's the overall point. Uh, is uh, is everything clear? Are there any questions regarding this? Are there any questions? I had only question regarding the the, the MetaMask and hard wallet. Um, why, why, if you if you have a coins like you had it on that uh, extension, MetaMask, why do we still need to connect the hardware wallet? We're gonna do a class on that because you're you're okay. not you you have to have your MetaMask be your front, and then you can have as many hardware wallets yeah. connected to your MetaMask. So that's just a read, and it's reading your wallet, but to interact. So we'll do a separate. Yeah, class. we could do a course on that. And if you you guys uh, are having trouble, obviously consider consider booking the the one on one. Oh, what's going on, Robbie? I think you're, you're you're echoing. Just mute your mic. So yeah, so that's that. So you see how the system state is copied, uh, which means not only me but everyone on Ethereum is getting free money, which they can go on Pulse X on and trade for real money, which they're gonna have to be buy PLS for, which they can easily access by just switching their network. So it's going to be an adoption juggernaut. I think it's going to it's going to receive a lot of adoption a lot of quickly, and that will pump your bags. Uh, and I think that's why the uh, the I think the PLS token and obviously the PLS X token um, are going to be uh, along with Hex are going to go up in uh, price a lot. So I guess before we get into let me unshare the screen. Stop screen. Uh, I'll make mine big. Okay. So, yeah. So before we get into um, PLS token and PLS X token, are there any questions? I'm sure there's some questions. No questions. Is everything clear? I don't want to be like, like I'm talking. Oh, let me plug back in my light. I want to feel like I'm actually going to go back and, and uh, rewatch the this. So just to kind of get it get down a little better. And I know you and I have a, a meeting on Monday, so we'll go over this again. I may I may uh, buy some more, although I, I did see that uh, the we what we bought yesterday went down. Of course, hex went yeah, down by yeah. 25 percent, but that's OK. I'm not I'm not hey, you bought the top, man. No, not the top, but the local top. The local top. But yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely go through it during the one-on-one. And also, if you guys, I highly recommend going on the previous courses that are posted. This one will also be posted. And just really learning Bitcoin and Ethereum, because that is the cornerstone uh, to really understanding this. If there's anything that you were maybe not sure of, there are any terms I was saying. If you understand Bitcoin and Ethereum, this is, this is easy peasy. And uh, I like to think that the, uh, the course on Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty clear. So, got it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, should we get into the tokens, the actual tokens? Because uh, you guys probably have been hearing hearing about like Pulse, Pulse X, ten thousand X, uh, very often, right? Yes. So that's it. That's that for the uh, Pulse chain. What it is, right? So, um, obviously. Um, Richard Hart is in it for the glory, right? So he doesn't just want uh, good 
products. He wants good price performance. And that's where game theory comes in. That's where, um, pro, you know, programming the money, like we see in Bitcoin with the having, which you guys should check out in my uh, Bitcoin course. Uh, basically, these uh, features implemented into these PRC20s, right, that, uh, that make the price go up. Uh, so basically, I'm going to reiterate. So all the tokens on Ethereum are what's known as ERC20s. The ERC20s copied onto Pulse Chain are called PRC20s. Very easy to remember because P as in Pulse Chain, E as in Ethereum. So basically, Ethereum, you know, in order to pay the miners, well, now not the miners anymore. Now it's the stakers, then the people running the uh, validators, which you guys should could, would learn about in the Ethereum. The people running the network, right? The workers that are doing the doing the heavy lifting, you know, making it all happen. In order to pay them, uh, you need to pay them in what's known as ETH, right? ETH token. So I'm not sure if any of you got, I'm sure most of you, I'm sure all of you have used Ethereum. Uh, whenever you want to transact or you want to use a, a smart contract, you need to, you need to, what's it called? You need, to, you need to pay the gas fee, right? You need to, you need to pay a fee in Ethereum uh, and that has a dollar value and that gets rewarded to the miners. So basically the same thing applies with Pulse Chain. So instead of ETH, obviously P Pulse Chain has its own token called uh, PLS. So PLS, right? I see, I see uh, backstage is Robbie one in Gowering. I can't bring you on. It says device is not connected. If you guys could message me in the private chat or something, if you can, I don't know. Or maybe it's, I, I know it's up to nine people. I think I have to start using Zoom now or buying another, uh, uh, another, the, this is the, 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 the upgrade. we've had, huh? Yeah, no, it's crazy. But, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope it's worth your money. Uh, so yeah. So what ETH is to Ethereum, PLS is to Pulse Chain. It is the, uh, native token. Right. So uh, why is it important and why is it good to speculate on? So when the gas fees were high, right, if you wanted to use the network, you had to go on Coinbase and you had to buy ETH, maybe three hundred dollars worth. You know, you had to pump Vitalik's bag. What's going on, Robbie? I'm Welcome. Back. Welcome to the Patreon. Thanks. So. And so you had to go on to Coinbase, you had to buy ETH. And a lot of people are doing that and that pump people's bags, right? Because you had to buy it, you had to use it. So um, what ETH is to Ethereum, Pulse is to PLS. So if you want to use uh, the Pulse chain network, you got to go on to whatever, Pulse X or maybe OKX soon once it's listed. You got to pump the bags, buy that uh, PLS token and uh, use it. If you want to pay a stake, whatever. It's going to be cheap, but whatever. <laughs> So what's unique about it is, um, one, it is deflationary. Um, so basically, I think there's a little bit of feedback. Um, who's it coming from? I, I, Robbie, it might be you. I might, I'm going to mute you. But if you want, have a question, just unmute, okay? Okay. And if not, it's somebody else. Or, or, or put on, if you put on headphones, it won't happen. If you put on headphones. Because then the speaker is not going to be speaking back to the mic um point is is that yeah so uh for pulse chain so the native token is pls so it's a very simple explanation it's basically ETH. there's a bigger circulating supply um there is for ethereum i think it's like maybe circulating supply of like 80 90 million 120 um, 120 million is that the max or that's the circulating i don't know Whatever. I think it's the max is 120. So for PLS, there's going to be a couple, of maybe trillion or something, because basically, yeah. So we're going to get into what the sack. Ten thousand times that. Yeah, ten thousand times that. So basically, so it's the native token, but there are some features that Richard Hart added that are very creative that um that make the price go up. And basically, so people need to buy it to use the chain, and when they use the chain, they pay the native token to the they pay it to the uh, the the uh, stakers, right? The people 
watch the proof of stake lesson if you haven't, but the people running the nodes, right? Uh, so basically what happens is they pay, they pay the fees to the stakers, but there's a percentage of that payment, you know, and then the stakers, a lot of them cash it out. So it's not necessarily good for the price, but albeit not as much as the miners were, but it, it is extra sell pressure. So what do you do to alleviate the sell pressure and to make it that the supply keeps getting smaller, it gets more rare. Um, a percentage of that also goes to this address that burns it. All right. So it's a burn, burn address. It's an address that burns it. So uh, basically, let's say it's a 20 percent. So 20 percent of the um, fees paid, you know, which are bought off the exchanges, you know, in order to uh, in order to, to, to use the network. Uh, some of it goes to the stakers who either stake it or cash out. But some of it goes to the burn address. So the more people that use it, the more that's getting bought off the market, right? The more users it has, the more it's bought off the market and the more that is burned, right? Because some of it goes to the stakers, but obviously some of it gets taken out of circulation. And obviously it's simple supply and demand, right? If there's less and less uh, pulse chain tokens in circulation and there's more and more people coming into the network to buy pulse chain, the price hockey sticks, right? Right, right. Good. Number go up. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Cool. That's why a lot of people are interested. Furthermore, uh, the founder, Richard Hart, has a proven track record of creating good tokenomics, right? He had uh he had a pulse chain he had not pulse chain he had hex right which also had a game theory in which if you want to earn inflation you have to buy it off the market and take it and burn it essentially take it out of circulation uh and you you're incentivized to 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 stake more to take more out of circulation to take it out of circulation for longer and to take it out of circulation earlier right so it made the price go up a lot same thing here you're incentivized to use the network you don't want to pay the high gas fees on ethereum you need to buy it off the exchanges. You need to send it to this burn address, a percentage of it, and just the, the supply contracts, contracts, contracts. And then more people are coming in. You have all these people, you know, these new people on Ethereum. They are just coming in to use the network. They need to buy. They need to buy. But it's like, but there's like so little left. You know, it's all getting burnt. We're going to pay more. We're going to pay more. We're going to pay more. Price goes up. You get mad gains mad gains mad gains and this is not you know people think this is like something that's uh exceptional in crypto i mean richard hart's game theory is exceptional but every not every but all the good projects have features in it that make the token go up it's great advertising and it make, gets more people involved bitcoin which is the uh first one uh does it through the having which you guys can see in the bitcoin course they also have a method of uh of making the price go up so that's the overall point with pulse uh we're just going to go into pulse x very briefly and then we'll get into how you can buy it how people bought it in the first place and then how you can buy it and then we're going to answer all your questions okay you have any questions we're running well on time uh i i have till Probably 11.30, 11.45. So we're going to get to all your questions next. Well, does anyone have any questions on just on this topic first? All good. All good. Is it really all good? Because I, I don't want to feel like I'm talking a wall. If you have a question, ask it. Okay, you guys either have no idea what I'm talking about or it's very clear. And I'm going to say it's very clear. <laughs> uh, okay, so then... That was the gas token, but um, obviously, welcome, Mr. Gao Rain. How you doing? Hi, Fu. How are you? How are you? Did you can say you I hear love me? I saw. I love you too, man. No, he said, <laughs> "Can you hear me?" Yeah, yeah, I could hear you. I could hear you. You're coming in loud and clear. Uh, we're awesome. gonna have to. Gonna have obviously to... not. If you said you love him too. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> since then. <laughs> um, and the recording is going to be posted for you to watch. And uh, also, we're having a meeting Sunday at 12 p.m. So you guys uh, could hop in that. Uh, should hop in that. You guys better hop in that. And you guys better hop in the Discord. Link it through. Link is through the, um, is through the Patreon. 
Okay. So then basically you have what we just looked at was uh, the decentralized exchange for uh, Pulse Chain, which is Pulse X. Um, and Pulse X, obviously. So basically we check out the course on decentralized exchanges. I like that I could just reference courses now. I don't have to go through all of it. But basically it's a trustless way of swapping on the uh, blockchain and what you, it's a fork, right? The same way you fork the blockchain, you could fork the code of uh, decentralized exchanges. Uh, and basically he took Uniswap and he forked it and he made Pulse X. So basically what Uniswap is to Ethereum, Pulse X is to Pulse Chain. And just like Uniswap has the Uni token, right? It has Uni and Uni did a couple, maybe 130X from what's all time low. Pulse X has the PLS token. PLS X token, okay? That is the token of the exchange. Uh, is there a functionality to the token in the way that, uh, you know, Pulse Chain PL at PLS? Not as much, but that doesn't necessarily matter. Um, they usually implement something like Uniswap says in the future, they're going to have a voting thing for that, but it doesn't matter because the founders own all of it and you're not going to basically be able to do anything with the voting. It's just, just a way of, you know, memeing it and getting this speculative stickiness. It's kind of like a stock. It's like, if you believe in the future of this, you know, you, you want to speculate on their token. Uh, point is uni though, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, but PLS X, you know, cause Richard Hart is not only in it for the tech, He's in it for the glory and he's in it for your bags with no expectation from a profit from the work of others. But uh, so he implemented a cool feature into the uh, Pulse X token that also makes it deflationary and perhaps even more deflationary than um, than Pulse Chain, actually. But that doesn't mean it's going to go up more because obviously it's there. There's more to it than just inflation, deflation, you know, circulating supply. It's a lot more complicated than that. And we're going to get into that in another course in the future. But the point is, is that um, the way he implemented it was basically when you trade on Uniswap, you, you pay a fee to the liquidity providers like Todd. Thank you for your service, Todd. Todd's an LP. Uh, in decentralized exchanges, anyone could be a liquidity provider. And essentially what it is, and check out my uh, course on that, but there are pairings, right? with ratios where they basically take one token and they take another token, they put it together um, and they throw it in the pool, right? And they basically uh, say, uh, you can take one and trade it for the other, right? They're just saying, take one, give me the other. And when they make the trade, uh, they not only pay for the token, but some of the money going towards the token, a small percentage uh, gets paid to the liquidity providers for their service. So if I'm exchanging USDC, for ethereum right in the usdc ethereum pair in the pool right some of my U most of my usdc goes to the pool in exchange for my ethereum but some of it goes to todd right over there todd okay so that's how it works right so richard hart said basically what's going to happen with the token is is when people when people go to the when people go to the pool right they go to the pool this is the pool pool party and you have the uh you have the usd C um, PLS pair, for example, right? All over the pool, you got the USDC uh, PLS pair. And if you guys aren't understanding this, you're not supposed to because you didn't watch my course on that, which is on you. And no, I'm kidding. Just check it out. It's not that like important to understand right now. But basically, if I come there with my USDC, so these pairs are owned by the liquidity providers, the LPs. In this particular case, it's Todd, okay? And Todd threw his pair in there, right? For anyone to trade one for the other. So I got my USDC, I want PLS, right? So I got my USDC, C. I want PLS, right? So I give my uh, USDC in exchange, I get my PLS, right? So now this is gone, I got PLS. So does all the USDC, so now, now we have two USDCs. It's a little bit more complicated than this, but just for simplicity's sake. So now we got two USDCs. Uh, so in exchange for that, some of that USDC goes to Todd, right? So Todd gets some USDC, right? That's the fees he's earning. You know, he's taking a risk and permanent loss, uh, and he's doing a service. So he re he he expects return. Does all of the fees go to Todd? Not so fast. 
Some of the fees also go to this wallet. This is a wallet if you guys can't see. All right. Okay. So some of the fees also, so some goes to Todd, but a cut also goes to this wallet. Okay. Wallet. Ooh, nobody knows who owns it. We have no expectation of profit from the work of others. Okay. This wallet then goes to the exchange. It takes that USDC. USDC takes the, it takes the USDC. It goes to the exchange, the PLSX pool, right? Let's say the, the PLSX uh, USDC pool. DC pool, okay? It buys PLSX. It buys PulseX, okay? So it deposits the USDC, buys the PulseX. And the pools will give it its value. What does it do with the PLSX? It burns it. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. It's gone. So now there's two USDCs. And then if the price of PLSX goes up, then Todd's stuck with his impermanent loss. And Todd's not so happy anymore. <laughs> Todd's, Todd, you see the frown face? <laughs> He's got his impermanent especially loss. Since, especially since the banks choked or the government choked us out. So I can't even do anything with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just got to buy some other crypto. Yeah. So the point is, is if more people get onboarded, right? So there's more and more people coming in and making trades, right? More and more people are coming to the pool, right? It's a pool, pool party, okay? More and more people are coming to the pool, right? That means more and more people are paying fees. That means more and more fees are going to the wallet, which is buying the PLSX up. And more and more PLSX is getting burned and more people want to hold the PLSX, uh, you know, because, you know, it's getting rarer and rarer. And the price, hockey sticks, hockey sticks, money. We're making we're making more and more money, right? Mad gains, mad gains. That's the point. Uh, that's called game theory, obviously. Um, that's why people are very excited about the PLSX. Especially token. K for K. Especially K for K. He talks about this in depth. So all the Richard Hart um, tokens. So you have, is that clear? Any questions about PLSX? It definitely helped. Are there any questions though? You have a question? Okay, no question. Oh, What's that? Oh, good. Yeah. What exactly does it mean when you say you burn a token? I, mean, I know what it's supposed to mean, but what's the process of that? How, how do we know it's burned? I mean, how, and what, what's the process of doing Yeah, it's it? a great question. So all the information is on the chain. So on the chain, the, the code states that 30 tokens are in Robbie One's wallet, right? And let's say, right, that's if you look on chain, you can go on Etherscan, put in the address of your wallet. It'll say how many tokens are there, right? It'll say how much, how many hex you have, how many USDC you have, how many everything, right? Okay, so the blockchain, so how do we know Robbie has money? What tells us? The blockchain said so, right? So if you trigger the functionality, you know, obviously it's not going to be in this case, but in the case of uh, in the case of this wallet, it triggers the code in the in the in the blockchain that basically says, um, so it says in the code that let's say there's 30 PLSX in this wallet. You trigger the function and it basically goes from 30 to zero. Now the blockchain states there are no more PLSX in the wallet. It's gone. It's gone. Basically, the blockchain is, you know, it's a spreadsheet that for Bitcoin and for obviously everything else, it, it, it uh, documents how much everyone has of each coin, right? So if in the net, if let's say basically uh, my wallet, says I have five Bitcoins, right? And then all of a sudden it says I have zero Bitcoins, then it's gone. It's essentially a burn. That's what a burn is. Uh, so I have a, I have a question for you uh, yeah, about yeah. the PLSX token. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so um, HEX has a utility where you can stake it and earn rewards. Yes. Right? Uh, PL, uh, Pulse Chain, or oh, sorry, PLS token, has the utility that it's like ETH, it's a gas token. And you could also stake it, yeah. You can also stake it. So PLSX, it sounds 
maybe I'm wrong, but from what you say, it sounds like it doesn't really have a utility. It's just you hold it because the price will go up and then people will sell it. Well, first of all, in that in and of itself is a big utility. For example, Bitcoin, you know, the price yeah. people just hold it. But it actually does have staking. And we're going to get into that right now. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so it has what's known as single-sided staking. on okay it has what's known as single-sided staking so with hex it's uh it's you earn in kind right you uh stake it for a given time you earn in kind basically the way uh plsx staking works is sx staking so you got how do i pronounce your name goring uh gorang 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 has his uh, PLSX. You go to the single-sided staking pool. Pool party. Pool party. Okay? You deposit your PLSX in there. Okay? It just gets locked up. Okay? Whatever. It's locked up. It's locked up in here. So you want to unlock it. And basically, uh, your wallet... I don't... Your wallet just keeps on... In, in exchange for that, you just earn this new token. It's called uh, INC, I think. It's just called incentive. It's the incentive for staking. So this new wallet just keeps on printing out of thin air and getting rewarded into your wallet for free for basically staking the PLSX. Does that make so, sense? There are no any risks uh, on the one, one site staking, is that right? What? There are no any risk on a one site staking. Well, I mean, the, what do you mean by risk is if what you mean is that there's risk is in the contract. I'm assuming that the contract is going to be good and there's not going to be some bug that you know, permanent money. loss. Yeah. yeah there's, like, uh, oh, loss. There, there's no impermanent loss. Correct. But there is obviously loss of volatility. So if your incentive token goes down in value, you lose US dollar value. If your pulse X that's staked. Uh, goes but if it goes value. down, you're hedging your bet because you're getting paid every day. So, yeah, I mean that helps, but it could, yeah, true. But uh, what you're, it's actually interesting. The comparison I make is to V Chain. Have any of you guys owned V Chain? Yes. Yeah. So, so Todd, so you remember when you leave your V Chain in your wallet, you print the gas token. It's a very cool, creative thing where you just yeah, V Thor or V Thor, yeah, yeah. So you just earn free. Uh, you don't even have to lock it in a in a um, in a contract. You just earn free uh, money for it. But the truth is, the the reward that you get usually doesn't appreciate much because everyone just wants to dump it. Uh, they just want to dump it for more PLSX so they could earn more of that reward. It's free. That's and that's why I don't. I'm not. We're not going to get into this, Todd. But I'm not the biggest fan of Hedron. Although I like it, I get it. Free. That's why Richard doesn't want to give the incentive token any pump of metals because he says it's garbage, it's trash. Yeah. You just yeah. earn it and sell it. Exactly. It's just a little bit of a speculative stickiness uh, that people are going to buy it because they want to earn. Right? As humans, we're wired to want to earn yield. Right? That's why Hex did so well. So the same thing with this uh, Pulse X. He's like, hey, I, I'm making a token. Why not? You know, put in this you know cool implementation where you could earn more free stuff. If you don't want the Hadron, just send it to me. I'll give you a, a burner wallet address, and you can. Just <laughs> it with yeah, yeah. Or I'll just, or I'll just take the Hadron. I'll buy some more hex with it. You know, I'll take a, a it. Compound. I will take it, man. All right. Uh, that's the point. So yeah, that's that's the staking goring. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes it makes sense. So a, a follow a follow up question. Uh, from from what you described, it looks like the price of PLX is designed to go up. Uh, because of because it's deflationary and you know a, a bunch of PLSX gets burned, could could it replace Hex as a store of value? Because Hex is now starting to get a store of value narrative going yeah. on. Um, could in the future because Hex is an inflationary coin, yeah. PLSX is a deflationary coin. I mean, do you think it could like long run? Has anybody made any calculations on could it replace Hex on that uh, narrative? In my opinion, absolutely not. And, I mean, is um, Uniswap going to replace Bitcoin? I mean, well, there's that also, but just um, because the staking function is not as uh, it's it's that's what I was saying. It's not it's not as simple as inflationary deflationary. 
because the staking function with PLSX, when you when you put it in the pool, you can always paper hand, right? You can always, you know, withdraw it and dump it. Mm. Um, also, yeah, there's no like time locking. You're also earning a shitty coin. I mean, let's be real. Uh, you're not earning you're not earning more PLSX. Yeah. So I just I think I think the game theory is uh, it's it's inferior. And also, there's no T share. Uh, you know, uh, there's right. no T share system implemented where where like people are incentivized to just buy and stake right now, buy and stake longer. I think Hex is a better pump mental token. I think Richard Hart created Hex because he said, I'm going to create the best possible appreciating asset. And he made it. And that's the game theory he did. He could have chose deflationary, but obviously inflationary because inflationary mm -hmm. is in fact advantageous in many ways, right? Like yeah. if Bitcoin didn't have inflation, there'd be no network. Uh, so yeah. then no one could buy it. So I think with PLSX, he made the token and he's like, may as well make it better and go up. But uh, he didn't make give it the functionalities of Hex because yeah. it's different. But yeah, that's what I think. I mean, it's possible it does better. I think I think it's possible it does better than Hex, especially in its first cycle, because um, because it's newer. It's it's less heavy, but it's I it's very possible it doesn't. Also, I I, I, I want all three. That's the way I go. And all five, all Hadron five. Hadron and Icosa. Don't and then, me. and then P Hex and uh, Wallet Token. So it's really like ten already. But <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's that. Any other questions? No, nope, not at the moment. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's the PLSX. So now the question is, oh, there are some wonderful products out there. Uh, how do we buy them? Okay, so I don't know if you guys are around, but basically, there was a period of time called the sacrifice phase. Sacrifice. Uh, so there's an issue with doing, what's that? Okay. There's an issue with um, ICOs where, you know, you you're, give you're someone money. Me? You were to me. I don't know. Uh, you're fine now. Yeah. All right. All right, Peter, I'll see you. Um, so there was basically a time where after Richard Hart announced that he was going to um, uh, launch these the blockchain, right? First it was pulse chain. So he's like, if anyone wants to buy PLS, what you have to do is you have to take your coin and you have to give it up to this wallet. And he gave an address, right? You have to take your coin, your, uh, let's say hex or Ethereum or whatever you wanted. You have to give it to this wallet. Okay. You have to throw it in this wallet. And basically in return, uh, you will get airdropped when pulse chain launches uh from the sky pls token okay i mean that's it so how much did you get you got for each dollar you got ten thousand you're tallied to get it didn't happen yet obviously you're tallied to get uh ten thousand tokens which is why it has a way bigger circulating supply than eth but uh so if you gave a dollar's worth one dollar worth of hex into the pool you get airdrop ten thousand pls token and that's it it went on for a month and after that uh the rate went down where you only got well it went down two percent every uh day after that so it went from ten thousand to i guess nine thousand eight hundred or whatever nine but the point is is that we're at the point where you can no longer uh buy uh pls same thing happened for plsx where you gave it to a wallet and um in return you got ten thousand uh plsx token you weren't you didn't get it yet but you're you're scheduled to get it and you got it on v3 if you go on v3 or you go on uh pulsexlead.com i think don't quote me on that it might be the wrong address but you could check how much you're owed to get and you will get uh when it drops now you guys are probably if you, thinking if you go on if you go on pulsechain.com you can see your sacrifice balances they have a bunch of tabs that you can go to pulsex you can pretty much navigate wherever you want to go so all right. Yeah. So there you go. Is that where um, it says uh, SAC or SAC points? Yes. Yes. So just put in your public address and you could check it out. Point is, is that um, someone's got to someone's got to mute. 
Ten four, good buddy. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. No, we're good now. Um, point is, is that um, so? How so that that those are the people that are going to get it at launch. Now, if you miss the sacrifice, how do you get it? You get it like you get any other token. You buy it on the exchange. You can either use your uh, your you know copied over uh, PRC twenty. So if you're holding hex, you can use your copied over. Um, uh p hex on pulse chain you go to pulse x like we showed earlier you guys can rewind and you trade it uh so that you could trade it or you can what's known as bridge you can bridge over your erc 20s your stable coins um and you can uh trade that for pulse or pulse x after the first two days that's where the whole ratio trading uh gets in but check out my course on bridges guys watch all the courses you're paying for them i really think they're helpful and it makes this it makes everything that I'm saying a lot more simple and it'll make you a better investor because you understand what you're uh, investing in. So uh, I think that really wraps up all the content. Is there anything that I may have missed? I'm gonna say then I didn't miss anything. Todd, did I miss anything? No. Okay, perfect. Everything's good to me. Is everything good to uh, you, Bob? Thank you, by the way, Todd. Bob, everything's good? Well, it's somewhat. I'm learning as I go. Okay. All right. And I obviously, just said yes. Okay. Try to absorb and as much as I can. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously. You know, it's just like anything. You just be surrounded with it, and eventually it'll just start clicking the more yeah. that you expose yourself to it. So. Yeah. Right. I I do understand now a little bit better about the Pulse, the Pulse X. I wasn't clear on that, you know, even the other day when you and I were on that one, we had a heck with on, but, but right. yeah, it's getting clearer. So yeah, I just got to sit here and listen, try to absorb as much of it as I can. Okay, perfect. And also like, if you want more personal, obviously you guys know I do one-on-ones and you guys, a lot of you guys, your first one-on-one -on -one is like 35% off or 25% off. So like, might might as well take it and then after that it's like 10 or 15 depending if you're paying 20 or 30 a month so uh you guys could consider that and you guys could consider asking me any questions you want now and during the uh sunday one-on-one uh so uh are there any questions yeah i have one i was trying to schedule a call with you on your site and uh, are you really all booked up or is it just something i was doing wrong no so if you since you're a Patreon, just um, send me an email, uh, you know, uh, when you want to do it or that you want to do it. And I'll tell you and we'll work at a time. And then I just send you uh, an invoice through the email for obviously the, the cheaper rate because, okay. you know, you're a Patreon. Uh, and I send you a link to the meeting because okay. if you book it online, I'm not sure why you weren't able to. But if you do, you're paying full price and you don't want to pay full price. And I'll obviously refund you, but it just makes it more complicated. So just that was all grayed out. Everything. So maybe Every, doing something wrong. No, maybe the maybe tomorrow, but Sunday is not, and Monday it's not. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, yeah, but don't you you do it through um send me an email, right? Or I'll send you an email. Just do it through email or message me on Patreon, uh, because obviously you're you're not paying the full price. You're getting a huge discount. So, uh, so Furu, you said Sunday you have a one on one, or is it is it another coaching call on Sunday? It's Sunday, like you and you could watch the video to all the um, all the meetings. We just have a meeting, Patreons. I send the link, I send uh, okay, yeah, I send the link pretty much, and uh, and yeah, you get in there. What's going on, Shuby? But basically, we basically have the every every Sunday. Oh, you got I'm I'm muting you, it's very noisy. Okay, I'll mute. Oh, oh, it's uh, it's my guy. What's going on? It's James. Uh, yeah, I know it's very noisy here. Hello, everyone. I'll hit mute and I'll just listen. All right, and if you have a question, just unmute and ask. But uh, yeah, I I got a buck, a hundred and one crazy questions. I'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so every every what's Sunday, his name say Shubu B, Shubu B. Yeah. Shabubi. 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 He's from Canada. They're very, very friendly. <laughs> um, uh, but basically, I... at, at 12, you know, you get in the meeting and we just talk about anything going on, whatever. 
And you can watch the recording also on the Patreon. Uh, I've, I've got one other question. I, and since I, this is my first call, so I, I don't know, maybe you've answered this question before. Uh, yeah. It's about the Testnet V3, which was launched yesterday. So I connected my, I had two Ethereum wallets. Uh, both of them had some um, hex on it. Um, when I connected them to the Testnet V3, I saw that one of the wallets has zero P hex. And then the other one has a lot less hex than I have on my Ethereum wallet. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if this snapshot that they took was a couple of months behind, like they didn't include like February or March, um, which is okay. This is a test net, but I was just concerned when we go main net, is this the same snapshot they're going to use? Because then I'm afraid I'm not going to get one to one, uh, you know, P hex, yeah. I guess. So actually, it's interesting that you're asking that because earlier I put in my hex address and I had uh, and I it's all on the screen. So you'll be able to watch the replay. Everything's going to be posted, first of all. But uh, you're able to see that I put in the hex. I'm like, hey, how come there's no hex in there? And then I put in the USD, but I had USDC. It's because it's from the snapshot is from a while back. OK, so as far as as far as the um, what the snapshot for the main net's going to be, it hasn't happened yet. It's not going to be a snapshot. It's just going to be a fork. So at the fork, right? Let's go to the our example. When it goes from uh, Ethereum, well, this is not clear. So when it goes from Ethereum to Pulse Chain, uh, that's when the snapshot happens. Okay. It's and then from then on, it's obviously whatever happens happens. But the point is, is that yes, you're and Richard Hart, I believe, tweeted about it. Yeah, that like it's not the okay. most up to date. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah of course. Any other questions? No, I was going to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with you, Furu. Um, so I'll send you an email. As you said, I can just email you on Patreon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You message me on Patreon or email me at Furu Finance okay. at Gmail. I think I got you down for, uh, uh, was it 2.30 on Sunday? Is that you? Uh, so I, 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 I can do 2.30 on, so 2.30, I mean, you, you're, you're, because I'm in the UK, so yeah, two thirty uh, Eastern, two thirty Eastern. Eastern, okay. So that'll be okay. I can do that on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. All right, I got you down. Yeah. So okay. All right. Who else? Let's go. You guys, I know you guys have thing. Anything? It doesn't have to be on on this. It could be on anything. Because I I'll, I'm going to stay on front. I got a question. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Um. How are you oning and offing? So you're going to have to. Have, has anything changed with, with, uh, do you usually wire in and out or what do you do? No, a debit card because then you get to take your stuff out oh. immediately. But it's a more expensive fee. But what you wire? Yeah, you can do it immediately that way also. You could wire immediately? Yeah. How? I mean, two hours. What? You just go to your go to your bank and you wire in or out. Coinbase doesn't let me. Why makes me wait a week? Well, I, I was using Kraken um, oh, and Gemini, but every time somebody had a problem, I would switch. And I'm just wondering how oning and offing is with the bank shutting down. And you know, I, I just was curious about. I haven't tried to do anything since all that happened, but I was just seeing if. If they're going to completely choke it out to where you can't get out, or what what's going to happen? So I think that uh, I think that well, thankfully, I mean, for better or for worse, the Fed said they're going to they they provide a liquidity to the banks. I don't think that's an issue anymore. They basically basically said that banks you have bonds that are worth a lot less than their face value, but will let you borrow against the face value. But, so but even, they yeah. they they put a hit out on crypto banks because they don't want people to be able to mm. go into crypto. I know people are saying that, no, but I, I, no, it's I mean it ha I, it happened to Silicon Valley Bank wasn't a crypto bank. It's, yeah, it was. It, there was just no, it was, it was uh, the biggest, was, the biggest no, crypto that, bank. No, it wasn't the, so you had uh, Silvergate, Silvergate signature, and, signature, signature and, Silicon yeah. Valley wasn't crypto. Oh, I yeah. thought it. I thought it was crypto friendly. Yeah, now you they me. I don't think so. But then you had First Republic, not crypto at all. It's just these smaller banks are having major liquidity issues. Um, 
I don't think I don't think it's purposely going after. If it was going after crypto, why they bail them out, right? So I, I don't think so. And I think crypto's here. I don't think the government. So they can look to. like the hero, but they're still so they helping can it. Re regulate it. Okay, so I mean, you want to say that they're um, that they're purposely destroying the banks so they could uh, use it as a pretense to implement regulation? It's possible. But Correct. I don't think cryptos. I don't think it's going to go away. I think I don't think they're going to take everyone's money. If that's the question, in my opinion, and I don't know, I can't tell you the future, but I'm not worried personally. So when you dollar cost in, like you said, you just bought hex at eight or nine cents. Did you bring more money into the system, or did you use money you already had in there? No, I brought I brought more money. I, I out of my and you just account. use a debit card. I use debit, yeah. It might not be the most efficient way. Honestly, I should probably pay the $30 a month on Coinbase to pay no fees because I buy a lot. But yeah, I go through my bank. Hey, Fur. Yeah. You, you use yeah. your debit card. When I use my debit card on Coinbase, they hold it for five days before I can move it out of the account. Uh, you got to talk to Bob. Me and me and Bob and uh, Brian also uh, had that issue, and we had to do the hostage photos. You basically you go to the email, and then you do you want to withdraw now. They make you put your driver's license front and back, and they make you um, take a picture of yourself also, and then you can do it. It's annoying as anything, but KYC. Uh, yeah, KYC. we had quite an issue trying to get that done. <laughs> okay, well, I'll try and do that. And just so you know, I wired money yesterday, so you can still wire, no problem. Yeah, wire is no, but you have to wait two weeks or a week or something. No, no it's, it's instant no, if I wire. It's instant. But the the only thing I have to take is the processing time for them to process the No, wire. but you to withdraw, to take it from the from the, the no. okay. If, 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 I I wire it, if I wire it, it's instant, but if I do it with my debit card, I have to wait five days. Until right. I do whatever you just said. That's we interesting. Did. We didn't. We didn't. We end up going through because wire, wire is essentially a cashier's check. Okay, I'll I'll have to look into that. Thanks for telling yeah. me. Yeah, it, it might be a little bit more expensive. It depends on the amount that you do, uh, whether it's cheaper with wiring or the. Do, do you know what bank you used? I, I'm using Banner Bank. Do you know what local. bank accepted the wire? Uh, I right, but the, you would have to wire. So the, I, I'd have to hold on. I'd have to look and see. Oh yeah, it could be the bank, like depending on the bank. Like if you're using a, a more crypto friendly bank, maybe uh, like, like Kraken would go through Signature. They had a no, couple they, MVB and then Signature, and I know Signature is not available anymore. And that's what I like. It goes through. What's the name of the bank? Cross River Bank. It says. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, Cross River? I think I... Oh. And what exchange did you use, Jeff? Coinbase. Coinbase? Yeah. Coinbase is so king in terms of, like, ease of use. I can't even use Coinbase. Is there somebody there better than... Do you guys have an uh, account with Binance? Any of you guys have an account with Binance? You can't use it in the, in the U... In New York, you can't even use Binance U.S., but uh, in the U.S., you can't even use regular Binance. You have to use Binance U.S. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I used to use it. I, I've started using Binance. They recently um, – they've enabled, like, bank transfers from the U.K. bank accounts. Um, but they're, like uh, – sometimes they, they just stop the service entirely. I think it's the U.K. regulators. Uh, but with Coinbase, I've never had a problem um, – I do a bank transfer within a few minutes. It's there. Yeah, uh, honestly. Yeah, I I prefer Binance because it has a much better user interface. It's much quicker to use. Um, but I've had some problems where uh, last 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 pull run, I had some money on it, and they they basically would block my withdrawal. Withdraw. Yeah, a lot of people have that issue. It's crazy. And then they wanted me to write essays and give them all the <laughs> proof of. <laughs> So I'm a bit I'm a bit uh, careful with Binance. Um, I just like send some money, uh, trade it to USDT, and then take it out, uh, move it to Uniswap or whatever. You know, nice. I never keep anything on there. Uh, do you think uh, Pulse Chain will outperform Hex? That's an interesting question. So uh, I think Pulse X 
I think less likely, right? Because let's just talk for a second about Pulse Chain against Pulse X, right? So Pulse Chain had 39,000 sacrificers. Pulse X had like 130,000. A lot more people came on board into Hex uh, and sacrificed during Pulse X because it was later. And you could bet your ass that they all want Pulse Chain. So you could also bet your ass that they're probably not going to want to buy Pulse X, right? So I think there's there's just a bigger demand for Pulse Chain. There's a smaller supply. There's a smaller amount of wallets holding. So I think, at least in the short term, even though Pulse X seemingly has better game theory, um, Pulse Chain is going to outperform. Uh, as far as Hex, it's an interesting question. Because Hex, maybe Pulse Chain outperforms Hex uh, per se, the current Hex. But you're also getting a doubling. You're also earning yield, right? So... Uh, you have to consider those factors. So there is a little bit of a leg up there. So is it going to outperform my doubling of hex uh, and my, plus my yield earn? Less likely. I still think that since Pulse Chain is new, right? First cycle, if it's if it's a co good coin, does better than its later cycle. So I still think Pulse Chain might edge out hex in its first cycle. But that's not to say that you should not buy Hex and only buy Pulse Chain, because if you're not staked, right, and I talk about this on the stream all the time, staking is really what saves you from doing something stupid, selling too early, too late. Because a lot of people come in there, they think that they're going to get in at the right time, get out at the right time, especially the first your first uh, bull market in crypto. It never works out that way. If it was that easy, everyone would do it. And since everyone can't do it, nobody really does it. Uh, so you're probably not going to get all the multiples. You're probably going to either sell too early, too late, trade, do something stupid. I mean, and Hex doesn't allow that. And Hex gives you yield. And Hex um, has awesome game theory, too. So I think uh, it's not smart to, to, even though I personally really sincerely believe, if I'm honestly speaking, that I think Pulse Chain is going to edge out uh, all Pulse X and, and, and Hex. I still think if you're not, if you don't have a staking ladder, I think it, it could really hinder your chance of, of achieving financial freedom. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the, a couple of weeks ago, you did an interview with Johnny Chaos, which is a fantastic interview, by the way. I learned oh, thanks, so man. much from it. Uh, and he was talking about um, a concept called right, liquidity bonding or something, um, where he said that the, uh, the guys who have a lot of hex, or, yeah. or Pulse Chain, which yeah. is basically Richard Hart or his wallets, uh, they can basically bond the ratio or something. Uh, now, I, I'll i be honest, I'm not very technical, but I, I did watch it a few times to, to understand what uh, he was saying. And what I got from the end is like he says, as, as Pulse Chain goes up in price, it's going to drag uh, positively, I mean, um, yeah. hex up as well. So then he said that you know Paul, if you're in if you're in hex you, you can just hold hex and you don't even have to buy pulse chain so that that's the thing that I, I okay to, that's I mean, a good is question that, is that true do you, what do you think about that that that's a good question first of all I strong are you in the Discord did you hop in um, no I just joined the Patreon yesterday okay go click membership now and connect okay. to Discord. Okay. Um, because I posted the videos where one, it explains Hart's law and why they move up and down together. And two, I break down with the board, you know, one of my live streams, uh, um, why, why they could force a parity of EXPX and they could force these uh, ratios to never change. And basically, so that's possible. It's up to the OA. It's up to that big wallet. And yeah. we don't know if he will do it or not. But okay. if he does do it, then basically if he locks in all the ratios, then it doesn't matter what you buy. The returns will be the same. Same. So, okay. so I mean, yeah. we have to assume that it's not going to be that case. And if it's that case, then you should just buy Hex uh, because – at least with Hex, you get the highest like uh, yield. You earn the yep. most interest. Uh, the yep. other ones, even though they're going to move up and down the same amount, you're not going to get that. So I wouldn't count on it. Uh, if it happens, then in that case, just own all of them or just own Hex, whatever. Yep. But we have to assume that that's not going to happen because if we assume it's going to happen, then it, nothing matters. You could own right. any coin. You know what I'm saying? So Right, right. All right. But yeah, get in the Discord. Watch yeah. that video. If you're having okay. trouble getting in the Discord, message me. I'll send you the link to those videos, and I'll try and help you out sure. on uh, on on Sunday. Uh, yeah. Getting into Discord. Yeah. All right. 
uh, I was just wondering, are, are we okay for two o'clock uh, today? I think so. I think so. Okay, great, great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm going to head home, so I'll lose the connection here, but I'm going to watch the replay. All the best, All right. everyone. Uh, All right. Congratulations on the V3. We're closer yeah. now than we ever were. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you later. All right. Any other questions? We're getting smaller and smaller. Robbie, you haven't said anything. No question. Not no question. yet. I'll go over with you on the call. All right. And Quite Jeff? Oh, I'm sorry. Question. All right. And Jeff? You... Bob? Yeah, like I said, I've, I'm sure I've got 100 questions. I'll probably rewatch this again before Sunday. But but it's, it's starting to get a little bit clearer, slow but sure. All right. Awesome. And Todd? I know you know every you know a lot, so might not have questions. Have it. it doesn't have to be about this. Is anything? Is there anything you had a question about on anything that maybe I could give a perspective? Todd? You know, uh, what do you know about? Uh, could you tell me about Arbitrum? You know, Arbitrum. Like yeah. It's kind, yeah. It's a it's another L two chain. It's another uh, fork. It's a it's actually an EVM, just like Pulse Chain. Um, I believe it's like kind of polygon matic where you can bridge, you can basically, since Ethereum ex is expensive, the use of Arbitrum would be you take your ERC instead of Pulse Chain, which copies all of them, uh, you basically just take it off Ethereum and put them somewhere else, and then it's cheap. That's really what it okay. is. So, if you had uh, anything over in Arbitrum, you need to get it back over to mainnet, right? Because, yeah, you that's get the copy. That's what's known as a bridge, and you got to watch my uh, bridge uh, course to really fully understand it. But if you bridge your uh, PRC twenty, um, if you bridge your PRC your ERC twenty before mainnet launch, I think just thinking about it, and maybe Todd, you could correct me, but I think if it's in the bridge, then you just have to un. Um, no, you can't. No, it's gone. It's gone. I, I, I don't think. See, I, I have GMX on Arbitrum and I stake it over there and I get like 8% or something. So um, I, I'm not going to move it for to get the snapshot. I'm yeah. just leaving that there. But it's just cheap. You know, I mean, your transactions are under a dollar and you can interact with 10 ERC 20 coins if you want, like, like ones that you know about. Um, you know, chain links coming to mind. Like you can buy it there and stake it there, I think. But um, yeah, I think whatever you send over there, you won't get a copy of. I was thinking because the bridge is going to get copied, you could maybe take it out of the bridge once. That's, uh, that's basically launch. just like your money because they, they give you your money on the other side. And then when you want to go back, it's the liquidity is supposed to be locked there. So yeah, I, but, I don't I don't think it works like that, but I'm not 100 percent sure. No, because right. So the bridge, right? The bridge is copied over. So your ERC20, it, it never leaves the chain. It just gets locked in the bridge. And then, you know, there's a token on the other side. And then once, and then you could always unlock it. You just need to put in the token on the other side. So I'm saying the bridge is copied over. So the ERC20 in the bridge is copied over. The thing is, there's no token on the other side copied over that you could unlock it. So it's probably just going to stay in there. Right. I think. I don't know. It's complicated stuff, guys. Uh, learn about bridges. <laughs> in the course in the Patreon, we have a good course on uh, bridges. And we have to redo the Hex course because I think that came out bad. And, and if you're using, if you're trying to bridge back from Arbitron and you're using their bridge, you're looking at like a seven-day lockup. Hey, there's, no. there's, <laughs> there's, there's some degen bridges you can use that are less secure, but um, it takes some time to get it back over. I know that. But if you um if you pay more gas, could you get it faster? No. Oh, that sucks. But you can use um, less secure bridges if you want. What about uh, so the pulse chain bridge? Do you know how long that's gonna be? I do not. Oh, all right. That's why Johnny Chaos says that it should be parity because basically if you take the uh, – he, he thinks the OA should force a parity between EX and PX because if you want to bring your uh, EHEX onto Pulse Chain, 
if you put it in the bridge and let's say it goes down against uh it goes down in value and like by the time you get it on the other side it goes down a lot less a lot more um you lost money right you're not gonna be able to trade it for as much but if it's uh if if you want to yeah i don't know whatever universal conduits and can't fucking think anymore i'm sorry yeah they're 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 definitely confusing there's this is a it's a whole it's, it's the whole but thing. basically yeah. the the price of hex doesn't go down during the time it's in the bridge right i'm saying you don't yeah you could still buy the same amount of uh hex on the other side um mm -hmm. if you bridge it because if they're not at parity and you want to trade your e hex for p hex if EX goes down, let's say it takes a, a data bridge, then you're getting less PX. The the best way is to just swap it into USDC or something more stable. That way you don't get gained by a system. But typically when you're using a bridge, it's quicker to go there than to come back. So I, I'm not an expert, but I know that usually when you bridge something a couple hours, you have your stuff or 15 minutes or so. But yeah, if you want to save yourself from volatility you could just swap it to a stable no so that's the, that's yeah. the pro that's the problem though if you have to swap it to a stable then you're driving the price down so if people want to swap if you want to bridge in their uh ehex and they have to swap it for a stable sometimes you got to worry about yourself or no but i'm saying if there's parity you don't have to do that right yeah yeah so that, that's why he wants it we'll see if the way he does it it's gonna be very interesting all right, so I guess uh, I guess we'll call it for uh, today, um, and I'm looking forward to the one on ones, and I'm obviously guys looking forward to the um, Sunday meeting at 12 p.m. and maybe we'll do another course next Friday. We'll work it out during the Sunday meeting, and maybe we'll do it. Well, maybe we will, maybe we won't, depending on you. You know, if enough people could attend, this was fun, and um, and uh, the link to obviously the Sunday meeting is going to be posted on the Patreon in the Discord, and I'm going to email it to all of you. So uh, shouldn't be hard to find. 12 p.m. Eastern, and yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. I'll see if you guys tune in uh, tune in at 12 p.m. today for the stream as well. You get a shout out in the chat if you uh, if you're in the chat. I'll give you a shout out. And um, and uh, is there anything else I want to say? That's it. Yeah. What was it at 12 p.m.? Uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Get in. If you're not in the Discord, get in the Discord. We're having a lot of fun in the Discord, right? I'm, right, in, Jeff? I'm in the Discord. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, get in, hop in the Discord. Uh, click membership, connect to Discord. Yeah. You can do that in Patreon. Yeah. Patreon. Bob, I'm probably going to have to walk you through that. Because yeah, he is a little older. Well, I have a Discord, but it's on for something else. Can I? I mean, oh I yeah, yeah. So yeah, click membership, connect to Discord, and if uh, that doesn't work, then I'll get you to it uh, when we meet. Okay, that'll work. You probably right. will eventually. Okay, I'm gonna end this recording right now.